Thank you for joining us on this tour of Texas's newest resort, the Kalahari Resort in Round Rock, Texas. This is a pretty extensive tour where we're going to cover a lot of ground. We'll be showing you the hotel rooms, dining, restaurants, bars, entertainment, pools, the water park, and the convention center. Get ready to walk through the doors of the Kalahari. Once you enter the front door of the Kalahari, you'll immediately notice the African wildlife theme throughout. They spared no expense at this hotel. From my 10-year-old daughter's perspective, this place is equivalent to Disneyland. They have everything, she said. I myself might compare it to the Gaylord Texan. However, I believe there are a lot more things to do here than at the Gaylord. There are plenty of places to lounge while you're waiting for one member of your party to check in. The Kalahari did a great job of decorating throughout for the Christmas season. When you walk into the lobby, turn to your right and follow the zebra and they will take you to the check-in counter. Check-in may take a little longer than a typical hotel just due to the number of activities you can sign up for. If you didn't book everything up front, you can add enhancements to your stay at the concierge desk. During our stay, we were in the double queen sofa room. For the three of us, this had everything we needed. They have other room types from king suites to hospitality suites to the three bedroom presidential suite. You have your standard hotel room safe, microwave, refrigerator. The sink is placed conveniently outside the water closet. They even tie your towel into an elephant upon arrival. Let's take a look at the shopping options that are available. The first option is the Marrakesh Market. Here you can find lots of souvenirs about the Kalahari Resorts in Texas, and even sundries if you forgot them. Directly next to the indoor water park, you'll find Indigo, which is a swimwear and accessories store. You can buy swimming trunks, goggles, sarongs, anything you need. My 10-year-old daughter's favorite place was Zakanaka, which is a kid's store, which is where she purchased her new favorite stuffed animal, a snake. Kalahari also features several quick serve dining options, like here is Provisions, which is southern cooking. These are for resort guests and visitors that are on the go and don't want to stop too long to eat a full sit down meal. They're also more affordable than the full service restaurants. Another favorite of my daughter is The Last Bite, which is a candy and ice cream shop. Here you can find pretty much anything you could possibly want, and it is good. They have a pretty large selection of candy to choose from. All the dessert options you see here are handmade and made on premises. I personally tried a milkshake and it was really good and thick. They even have a window near the elevator where you can watch these desserts being made in person. Here you can see the silicone molds that they use to make chocolate lions. If you're looking for a quick meal while inside the water park, the Zulu Grill is the place you want to stop. If you're like me and you need a coffee to start the day, be sure to stop by the Java Manjaro. This is where they serve Starbucks coffee. They also have a small selection of hot breakfast items you can get as well. 
My favorite, of course, are the pastries. And most specifically, they get Round Rock donuts delivered on a daily basis. If you're looking for cafe fare, look no further than Sortino's Gelato and Cafe. This is right near the Sortino's restaurant, which we will be showing later. This is another source of coffee and ice cream and light snack fare at the resort. Another quick dining option is Pizzeria Sortino. You can order your pizza to go or you can sit down inside the pizzeria and enjoy your pizza there. Another part of the Sortino complex is Vinoteca. This is a wine bar and lounge with plenty of seating and plenty of wine. The main restaurant inside the Sortino's complex is called Sortino's Italian Kitchen. This can be accessed from within the hotel or from outside the hotel as well. When you check in at the hostess stand, the Italian kitchen is to the left and Vinoteca is to the right. Since our daughter is with us, we opted for the Sortino Italian Kitchen. Another full-service restaurant located on the lower level of the hotel is Cinco Niños. This is a modern Mexican kitchen, and it also features a Mexican tequileria. The bar you see here can be accessed from the exterior of the hotel when you're at the outdoor pool. During warmer weather, the most expensive option is the Double Cut Steakhouse. It features a nice selection of steaks and seafood. I wasn't able to get a shot of the interior, unfortunately. If you find yourself in the amusement park area of the resort, Belux Bar and Grill is a great place to stop for a beer and a burger. And one of the largest sourdough pretzels I've ever had. Not only that, but it's got its own bowling alley. You can order the full dining room and bar menu directly from your bowling lane. This is a great way to continue the fun and eat with your family at the same time. Seating is comfortable and plenty of room to store your shoes. I almost didn't find the last dining option as it's only open for breakfast, and that's the Great Karoo Marketplace. This is your traditional resort breakfast buffet. For now, they are serving you the food directly from the buffet line. If adult beverages are on your mind, the Kalahari has a great selection of bars and lounges. The Baobab Social is one of them, at least if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is the main feature bar of the resort. It is located just downstairs from the lobby. It has a ton of seating and a warm atmosphere both day and night. Next up is one of the more creative lounges of the resort, Red's Piano Lounge. This is a speakeasy type lounge, which is accessed through a secret door in the bookcase in the wall. The indoor water park also has a selection of bars. One is called the Crack Coconut, as you can see here. You can order directly from the bar, or there are servers rotating throughout the water park taking orders. Just be aware that the souvenir cup drinks are expensive. If you can accomplish it and want to get away from the kids, the Grotto is a great place to go. This is an adult pool and swim up bar. It's essentially an underwater lounge, as you can see by the seating here probably better for the parents of older children that you don't mind leaving alone. So now let's get to the main attractions of this resort and the reason you're probably even watching this video. The first place we're going to take a look at is the Indoor Adventure Park. I think we literally spent the entire first day of our trip there. It is called Tom Foolery's Adventure Park. There is no shortage of things for kids and adults alike to do here. Now the arcade games and ticket dispensing machines are all individually priced and are paid with a game card. The other attractions and rides can either be purchased individually or you can buy an all day pass, which is what we did. The day pass we got was actually packaged in with our hotel room. You can find those deals from time to time. This is called the Sky Trail. It is essentially a two story obstacle course slash zip line. Parents and kids alike will enjoy this at least if you're somewhat adventurous and don't mind heights. There are multiple ways to get from platform to platform. You're secured to a steel beam by a tether throughout the entire journey. The 
sky trail is two zip lines and this one is on the second story. As I said, even adults like to get in on the fun. While I'm sure there's a weight limit for the zip line, my wife and myself both had no problems utilizing the zip line, and it was pretty fun. If heights are your thing, there's no shortage of things to climb. They have all sorts of structures to climb. And once again, you'll be tethered from the very top by a zip line. Adults and kids of a certain height are able to enjoy this adventure. Another ride we went on about 10 or 15 times is called Maximum Foolosity. This is a whirly ride that goes 50 feet up into the air and spins you around and goes up and down. It's a great place to get a full view of the entire adventure park. Another popular ride is the Screamin' Centipede. This is a great little indoor roller coaster and if you want to sit in the front part that goes all the way upside down, there's a separate line for that. We covered this a little bit before, but the Beelux Bar and Grill has a bowling alley. And this is located right off of the Adventure Park. Even if you have the day pass, this is an extra fee as you would need to rent the lane as well as the shoes. In the main section of the hotel, there's a place called the Adventurers Club. And this is for littler kids that want to color and do crafts and all sorts of activities. During warmer weather, the Amatuli Arts and Entertainment District is a great place to go. Since it wasn't active on our trip, my understanding is that this is a place to watch live concerts. They will have vendors selling arts and crafts from time to time. And generally just a fun place to hang out. This is located just outside the Sertino's restaurant complex. The other area visitors are going to want to see during warmer climate periods is the outdoor pools and slides. There is even another bar located here called Zanza Bar, which is a swim-up bar as you can see there. The water slides featured here are much smaller than the ones featured inside of the resort. I can just imagine the crowds on a warm summer day that this will draw. During the warmer weather, they also have cabanas available to rent as well. Even at night, the pool area looks gorgeous. During the season, the pool hours outside will be till 9 p.m. In addition to day passes, it's my understanding that they'll have an after 5 p.m. pass for day use. While there technically isn't any larger water sides outside, they do extend from the inside to the outside, but you exit from the inside. Let's take a look at the main feature of this resort, America's largest indoor water park. If you're here for the day or arrive prior to your check-in time, they have changing rooms available right at the entrance. All I can say is that this place is massive. There are an amazing amount of activities you can do and an amazing number of water slides. There's just over 223,000 square feet of fun. One popular feature of the water park is the Zero Vision water screen and wave pool. The screen features music videos all the way from the early days of MTV to the present. A horn will blast before the waves start. That way you know it's time to get in and enjoy the rocking and the rolling. The multicolored slide here is called the Cheetah Race, where you can grab three friends and race down on the mats.
This is called the Flow Rider, a five foot wave simulator. They even have water basketball. Just beware of the splashback for missed shots. This slide is the Tanzanian Twister. You will swirl around this funnel at 40 miles per hour before dropping into the seven feet of water. This is a short but curvy slide that drops you into about nine feet of water. My favorite way to spend a relaxing Sunday afternoon is here, the Lazy River. Just grab a tube and relax as you're carried swiftly down the river by the current. This is called Splashdown Safari, featuring a zero entry pool. It's a great place for the young ones to start if they're not ready for the big slides. My daughter was a little apprehensive of the bigger slide. She started out here, and in no time she was jumping on the bigger slides. There are also some nice lounge chairs and tables for the parents that want to watch their little kids. This area here is called Coral Cove, which is for the very littlest adventurers. I really love how they have something for everyone of all ages. There is even a small lazy river for the little kids. There's a lot of water fun to be had, even for those who are not big swimmers. Now for those of you with a little extra money to burn, or a big group, they have cabanas available to rent. The cabanas come in all shapes and sizes, to ones like this featuring a TV and lounge area, to the more extravagant with your own private hot tub. The last thing I want to cover is the convention center. There is a huge convention center attached to the resort. Since we weren't there for a convention, I can't speak too much to this, but I will say it's pretty big. I will also add that there's a lot of really unique chairs and carvings throughout the resort. Take a look at a few examples here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the tour. Feel free to ask any questions you have about the resort in the comments below. Be sure to check out our other hotel and resort reviews as well.